and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, celebrating 40 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. Today, Andrew illustrates the power of God's Word to change our lives in his teaching, The Word Became Flesh. Now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my fourth week of teaching on a new series that I have out entitled, The Word Became Flesh. This new series is actually a compilation of a number of different teachings that I already had out, but I taught all of these different things and put them together in a Gospel Truth Seminar that we held in uh, November of 2007 in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, we had such a powerful response to this. People were so blessed that we've combined all of these different teachings into one new teaching entitled, The Word Became Flesh. Today's my last day to teach the fourth part in this five-part series. And we offer the album for a gift of any amount, but we do offer each individual teaching as a free gift to you. So today's the last day to make that available. You know, also, let me point this out. I had one of my camera crews say something about today being uh, Friday the 13th. You know, some people, that bothers them. I always like Friday the 13th because, number one, I don't believe in that superstition. Uh, the Scripture says, I believe it's Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, might be 27 too, but it says, The curse causeless shall not come. And every time I hear something about, you know, some kind of a superstitious thing about walking under a ladder or black cat crossing your path, it just makes me focus that much more that, praise God, I'm not under that. And I always, because of that, have a great day on Friday the 13th because it makes me focus even more on how blessed I am and out from under those superstitions. So if any of you haven't got that revelation yet, I hope that today helps you just to realize that you are blessed in the Lord and not cursed and that this ought to be a great day for you. Amen? So we've been teaching from Mark chapter 11 about Jesus when he cursed the fig tree. His disciples were just blown away that Jesus could just talk to a fig tree and within 24 hours it was all shriveled up. And when they mentioned it, Jesus told them how he did it. And he said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And I've been teaching all of this week from that passage of Scripture, and I've really tried to emphasize that if you want to see miraculous results, you have to start learning how to speak and release life out of your mouth instead of death. You have to understand the importance of words, not only your words, but every word that comes your way. Boy, those are some powerful truths that I taught that most people have either been ignorant of or just chosen not to believe that that's true. But it is true. If you want to see the miraculous results that Jesus was talking about, you've got to start understanding the power of words. And then I started talking yesterday that in that same verse, Jesus said, whoever would say unto this mountain, not talking to God about their problem, but talking directly to the problem which to take that approach means that you first of all have to recognize that God's already done His part. God has already provided redemption from sin, from demonic powers, depression, oppression, from poverty, from sickness. God has already done His part, and then He placed this raising from the dead power on the inside of us, Ephesians 1:19. And so we don't have to approach God as powerless people saying, Oh God, we can do nothing. Would you please do something? No, we believe that God has already done it and invested every born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost believer with that same power. And then instead of talking to your God about your problem, what you do is take that authority and recognize who you are in Christ and you speak to your problem. There is a huge difference. I can't overstate the difference between the approach I just described and the way that most people approach their problem. You know, let me give you an example of this, and I've used this example a number of times on my TV programs. Those of you who watch on a regular basis will recognize this, but I've just not come up with a better example than this. It's really a classic example to me of what we're talking about right here. 
I was in Charlotte, North Carolina a number of years ago, and I was staying at some people's home. And when I came home to get ready for the evening service, the woman uh, that lived there that I was staying in her home, she was sitting in a chair just with tears in her eyes, and she had watched this video that I had about Nikki Oshinsky's Miraculous Healing. You know, that's a part of the Healing Journeys DVD that we've now put out. It has five testimonies out on there of Miraculous Healings. Well, many years ago, all we had was Nikki's testimony. This woman had watched it. It had touched her so much that she was just sitting there with tears in her eyes. And when I came home, she said, I've got a friend who has those same problems, the same things that was wrong with Nikki. Do you, would you pray with my friend? And I said, I'd be glad to pray with your friend. And she says, well, good, because she's already on her way. She'll be here in 10 minutes. So anyway, this woman came in, and I don't know exactly the, you know, the uh, medical name for what she had. I'm not sure that the medical uh, field actually put a name on it and totally understood. But for seven years, she had been diagnosed with this terrible pain. And they said that on a scale of 1 to 10, her pain was a constant 11. And they had uh, actually said that she wouldn't live longer than a year, and that was like two or three years before I saw her. This woman was just living on borrowed time. She had this constant pain. She had magnets strapped to her body. And then she had a blanket that had ma magnets sewn into that. And as she wrapped herself in this uh, blanket with these magnets, the magnetic field somehow or another helped her deal with the pain. And that's the only way she had been able to survive for the last two or three years. She was basically incapacitated, just in terrible pain. It was a bad situation. When she walked in, one of the very first things she said is, I know God can heal, but God is getting glory out of me being sick. And so I immediately countered that. You know, that's the same thing that I've done in this teaching that we've entitled The Word Became Flesh. The very first thing in this new album is that I start countering this belief that nothing happens but what God allows it and that He's using it somehow or another to bring glory to Him. And I countered that and told her, no, God didn't make you sick. And if you think God made you sick, there's no way you're going to get well because you would be resisting God if you start fighting against this thing. And then I started just countering unbelief and different things. This woman, she loved God. She was a good lady, but she just didn't know a lot of what the Word taught about this. And so I countered all of this stuff. And then I said, I'm going to pray for you. And I prayed for her. And remember, this woman for seven years had been in constant pain, 24 hours a day for seven years. I took authority and rebuked all of this pain, spoke to the pain, the way I've been talking about here in Mark 11, 23. I spoke to the pain, commanded it to leave, and then when I got through, I said, now how do you feel? And this woman sat there for a second. Then she stood up and began to move around, and she was totally pain-free, first time in seven years. And she, she was praising God, but she says, but I still have this burning on my back, right down at where the waistline was. She says, why do I have burning? And I said, you didn't tell me you had burning. I didn't speak to burning. I didn't take authority over burning. And so I said, let me pray again. Watch this. And I agreed, joined hands with her. And I prayed and I rebuked that burning. And instantly the burning was gone. And this woman was just praising God. And then I took about 20 minutes and I took this exact verse, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. And I taught her about the importance of her words, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. I taught her that she had to speak to the problem, that if she ever had another pain or if another burning sensation ever came, that didn't mean that she had lost her healing or it didn't mean that she had gotten sick over again. It was just Satan trying to get her to back off of her faith. It's like a knock on the door. That doesn't mean that the person has come in unless you open the door and invite them in. I said, if you will respond the way that you saw me pray over your sickness and disease, and if you will speak to the problem and take your authority and command the devil, the Bible says in James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I said, if you will resist him and actively fight against him, the devil will flee from you. So I spent her about 20 minutes teaching her these things so that she could keep this healing that she had. And I mean, she was just praising God. We were all thanking God. It was a first-class miracle. And anyway, as she headed towards the door, when she put her hand on the doorknob, 
she turned around and looked at me and she said, the burning is back. And she wanted me to pray for her. And I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to pray for you. I've taught you now how to do this. And I'll just, I joined hands with her and I said, you pray and I'll agree with you. And so this woman began to pray. And I'm, I may not have it exactly, but this is nearly word for word what this woman said. She said, Father, I thank you that it is your will to heal me. By your stripes, I was healed. And if I was healed, then I am healed. I claim my healing in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. She said something to that effect. Now, most of you are probably thinking, man, that's a great prayer. And you know what? For a person that was a Presbyterian 45 minutes before and believed that God is the one that made her sick and wanted to get glory out of this, well, that was an awesome prayer. The things that were said were all true. They were all positive. That was good. But you know what? It's not what the Bible says. And I knew that th that kind of prayer won't get you healed. There's many of you watching this program right now that you're just shocked. Think, oh, that's exactly the way I pray. I think that's a great prayer, claiming their healing, saying that by the stripes of Jesus they're healed. Those are all good things to say, but it's not what Jesus told us. It's not how he told us to receive the miraculous power of God. So I asked this woman after she got through praying, I said, so do you still have the burning? And she said, yes. And I said, do you know why? And she said, no. And I said, it's because you didn't do what I just taught you to do. And she says, all right, what do I have to do? And I said, you have to speak to the mountain. In this instance, you have to speak to that burning and command burning to be gone. And she says, you mean I have to say these words burning and talk to burning, say burning in the name of Jesus? And I said, yeah, that's exactly what you got to do. And this woman says, I'll do it. So we joined hands again, and you know what? She said, burning in the name of Jesus. That's as far as she got. She stopped right then, and she says, it's gone. <laughs> and I've talked to her since then. I've been over to her home since then, and I've eat, uh, she's fixed a meal for us. I've met her husband. And she's had a couple of times that she's had pain and burning come back, and she just took her authority and spoke, and those things have left. And it's now been, I couldn't tell you for sure, but I'm sure it's at least five years, and this woman is totally free from those things. To me, that is a classic example. See, this woman, she prayed and she said good things and she talked to God about her problem, but she didn't talk to her problem about God. She didn't speak directly to the mountain. And you know, I've taught on this on television a number of times because I believe that this is one of the keys. See, it's not just a matter of just speaking to the problem, but it's the fact that in order to speak to the problem instead of to approach God and ask and plead for His help and for His anointing, for you not to approach God and beg for Him to heal you and you just to speak to the problem, that implies that you already understand that God has healed you. By His stripes, you were healed that he has put that power on the inside of you. Ephesians 1, 19, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, which is more than enough for your headache, for your flu, for your cold, for your hangnail, or for cancer, or for AIDS, or anything else. The resurrecting power of Jesus is on the inside of every born-again believer. And if you would believe that you have it, and instead of approaching God and asking Him for power, asking Him for virtue, instead of just believing that you've got it, if you would believe that you have it and then speak to your problem, I'm telling you, you would start seeing miraculous results. I've taught on this on television so many times, and you know what? I have had thousands of people contact us who said that they've started doing this, and... Um, I mean, I just get testimony by the hundreds, certainly probably up into the thousands of people talking about how they have seen great, great miracles happen. If you would go back and remember this teaching that I did on healing just a month or two ago, the very last testimony that we used in that series was about the healing of little Hannah Teradez, I think is the way you pronounce her last name, over in England. And this girl, for over three years, had been unable to eat any solid food. They had to pulverize all of this food. And finally, she got to where she was rejecting everything, and they had to insert a tube and feed her intravenously. And eventually, she got to where she was even rejecting 
these uh, IVs that were feeding her, and the doctors had basically said there was nothing else that they could do. She'd be dead in just a matter of days or weeks. And during this period of time, the uh, parents, Ashley and Carly, of this little girl, Hannah, got hold of some of my teaching, began to hear the exact things that I'm teaching you. And they believed God. And it's a long story. Again, I'd encourage you to get this uh, DVD that we have on healing journeys if you'd like to see the whole testimony. And they brought her to a meeting. We prayed and did exactly what I'm talking about. It's a very simple prayer and just spoke to her body. And then the little girl woke up later. The parents told her that I had prayed for her. She was healed. She wanted to go eat. Now, remember, she was over three years old, had never eaten solid food in her three-plus years. And she said, well, if I'm healed, I want McDonald's. They weren't able to find a McDonald's, but they found a Kentucky Fried Chicken. They ate fried chicken. They ate, uh, I think it was ice cream, desserts, uh, potatoes type stuff. All of this fried, greasy food, fattening foods, things that would have basically killed Hannah before. And when she ate them, you know what? There were some problems that about an hour or two later, she started to have this pain. She started to cough and gag, which in the past would have meant that she was going to projectile vomit, all of that, said that the brothers began to get out of the way expecting this to come. But see, the parents, especially Ashley, had grabbed hold of this truth, and he turned around and spoke to Hannah and commanded her to quit gagging commanded that food to stay down. He didn't talk and ask God, oh God, please help Hannah. Now again, I'm not trying to criticize people, but see, this is what the average Christian does. When they're in a situation like this, if your daughter was dying and if you tried to take a step of faith, gave them solid food, and all of a sudden they started having the same response that they had had for over three years, you know what? Most people would have just in desperation called out on Jesus, Jesus help, oh God move. And you know what? I'm not saying that you're a bad person if you do that, but I'm saying you're missing this point. You think that you have no power to change things. You think that you have to call out and just beg God for a new intervention a new release of his power. You have to ask God to stretch forth his mighty hand. Oh, God, rend the heavens and come down. All of those things are prayed by people, but you know what? They're really unbelief. Your heart may be right, but your head is wrong because God rent the heavens and came down through Jesus. God has already provided all of these things. He's placed this power and authority on the inside of you. He told you to go heal the sick. And yet most of us say, oh, God, would you please go heal the sick? God's saying, no, I told you to do that. I put my power on the inside of you. You heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. There's not one out of a thousand Christians who believes that they have that power, who will take that authority and go and say like Peter and John did in Acts chapter 3, such as I have, give I unto thee. Instead, they'll come and say, oh, God, would you please stretch forth your hand and heal? Nope, you need to quit asking God to do what he's already done and start doing what he told you to do and quit asking God to do what he told you to do. Quit asking God to send revival and instead take the power that's placed on the inside of you and go out and heal the sick and cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, walk in supernatural victory, and you'll have all the revival that you can handle. See, again, Ashley, when his daughter began to start getting sick and they could see these same things that had happened every single time she tried to eat for three years, they could see this same thing happening. Instead of him crying out to God and asking for mercy and asking God to do something as if God hadn't already done it, instead, he took his authority and spoke to her and commanded that gagging to stop, commanded that food to stay down. And they said that within just minutes, she was totally normal. It happened one other time. I can't remember the, the exact time. It might have been the next day or the next week. One other time she was eating and something like that began to happen. And again, instead of begging God for intervention, they took their authority and commanded that healing to stay there and that Satan could not steal this from them. And it's now been over 18 months and as far as I'm aware, there's only those two times that they had to stand and rebuke something. And there, that little girl, Hannah, has gained over two stone, which um, a stone in England is 
somewhere around 13, 14 pounds. And so she's gained somewhere between 26, 28 pounds. She's healed. She's healthy. I tell you, if you didn't get that DVD, said you ought to get it because it is powerful. And anyway, that healing and so many other things just illustrate the point that I'm trying to make, what Jesus was saying here. He's telling us that if you want to see miraculous results, then you speak to the mountain. That means to the problem, to the situation. You know, if you've got something in your life, if you've got the itch, if you've got a rash, if you've got a pain, don't talk to God about your pain, your rash, your itch. Instead, talk to those things about God. Sit there and say, itch in the name of Jesus. I command you, you're out. Proverbs chapter 28 says that that was a curse. And then Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. So I don't have to have this. Itch be gone. Rash be gone. Pain be gone. I see clearly in the name of Jesus. Ears open up in the name of Jesus. Throat, I command you to be healed. I command the flu to be gone. Start using your words. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Use your words to curse sickness and disease, to kill infection, to kill viruses and things like that. And then release life out of your words and say, I believe that the supernatural life of God is flowing through me and quickening my body. And see, you start believing that God has given you this power. He gave you the power. It's inherent within every born-again, baptized in the Holy Ghost believer. You have that supernatural raising from the dead power. Now, how do you release that power? By the words that you say. You have the power, but it has to be released. How do you release it? You begin to speak. And not only speak out and say, I believe that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. That's a good thing to say, and it will help. But even more specifically, speak to the problem. Talk to the pain and say, pain, you're illegal. I was healed by the stripes of Jesus, and now you have to get out of my body. And then talk to your body. Also, don't only curse the sickness or the disease, but then release the life of God by saying, I loose this supernatural power of God to flow through my body to quicken every part of it. You know, I, when I was 18, um, anyway, it's a long story, but when I got drafted, they actually tested me and made me wear glasses. I never really wore them except when I had to on the rifle range in uh, testing for uh, Vietnam. But anyway, I was supposed to wear glasses. Long story, but I have improved. You know, this is small print. I've never had my eyes operated on, and yet I can read this Bible. But it was blurry, and I was having trouble and about a year or so ago, I just decided that, you know what, my eyes aren't getting better as I get older. Naturally, I have to speak. And I started speaking to my body and releasing the life of God. And I'd say in the latter part of 2007, my eyes improved dramatically. They weren't bad. They weren't real bad. But you know what, they could have been better. And I can see so much better. And I'm telling you, this is how I did it, by just speaking the Word of God saying these things, confessing it, not only to God, but speaking to my eyes. I would look in a mirror and point at my eyes and say, you are healed. You know, I'm out of time today. I'm going to have to continue our teachings next week. I encourage you to listen in. But today is our last day to offer you the fourth teaching in this five-part album entitled, The Word Became Flesh. Please listen as our announcer gives you that information and then call or write today. Andrew's five-part teaching titled, the Word Became Flesh, was captured live at a recent Gospel Truth seminar. It's available in a CD or DVD album for a gift of 16 pounds or more. For the CD album, ask for number T1057 or request the DVD series T3202. You can also get Andrew's teaching as seen on TV by asking for DVD album number T1057 when you send a gift of 16 pounds or more. The fourth teaching in the audio CD album is also available for a donation of three pounds or more. We encourage everyone to send a gift, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this fourth teaching free of charge. 
Today is our last day to offer you this fourth teaching in our series entitled, The Word Became Flesh. But you know, I mentioned this healing journeys about the story of little Hannah, Tara Dez that was healed. And this is, this has five miraculous healing testimonies on it. And I'd like to make a bonus offer today of this. Now, because we're offering this album for a gift of any amount, we, I just don't have the faith really to give all of these things away and have somebody send in $1 for it. So this retails for $25 or 13 pounds in the UK. We are going to ask that you uh, give that much money for this. But this is a special offer. If you'd like to receive this, just mention it, and we will uh, provide that along with these other materials. The best way to reach us is through our website. You can order ministry materials online 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. Or you can use your credit card to order by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. Again, that's 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours extend from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If you prefer to write us, our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Kampala, Uganda, July 11th and 12th. He'll also be in the Northwest Province of South Africa on July 20th and July 21st through the 23rd. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. I want to let you know that on July the 20th through the 23rd, I'm going to be ministering in South Africa. And I'm really excited to be coming back. This will be only my second trip there. On the 20th, I'm going to be ministering at Spirit Word Ministries. This is a Sunday afternoon service. And then on Monday through Wednesday, Arthur Minchez, and I know that that's not the way you pronounce his last name, but Arthur's a very good friend of mine, and he is South African. We're going to be holding a meeting on Monday through Wednesday with morning and evening services. And it's just going to be a great time in the Lord. So remember, this is July the 20th at Spirit Word Ministries. And then the 21st through the 23rd, we'll be using their facilities for our own conference there. It'll be called the Grace and Faith Conference. Be sure to tune in Monday for more gospel truth. The reason we aren't seeing a greater display of God's power isn't because we haven't asked enough, because we haven't begged enough. It's not because God isn't willing to do it. It's not because God hasn't already provided. It's more because we don't know what we have. We haven't taken our authority and power, and we haven't stood up to the devil and demanded our rights and our privileges. That's Monday on Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack.